Hello class, today I will be discussing uh, the causes of the French Revolution with a focus on the Third Estate and Enlightenment thought. Also we'll cover um, social groups during that time during pre-revolutionary France. Uh, while this is going on, make sure you kind of keep in mind what you would do if you were the bourgeoisie in these situations. And do you think the same things can happen in the United States? Uh, another revolution can happen in the United States like it did then uh, during the 18th century. So kind of keep this in mind because uh, you will need to know this tomorrow in class for our assignment. To get, get an idea of the social framework during pre-revolutionary France, first we're going to discuss the three major social groups during that time, which was comprised of the first estate, second estate, and third estate. And there were five subgroups below these, um, which is the king, clergy, nobility, the bourgeoisie, and the peasants. So first, we're going to start with the king. The king of France at this time was Louis XVI. Um, he was a young king, very naive, and they would call him incompetent king also. Highly persuaded by his wife Marie Antoinette. She even gave him political advice at times, which failed. Um, so yeah, the king, Louis XVI. Um, absolute, absolute monarchy. He's a, is that, that means a monarchy that is not limited or restrained by laws or a constitution. So there's basically no one to keep him in check except for God. Um, uh, they have this way you see centralized power. Um, all the power lies on him. Um, and they believe in divine rights. So that's just reiterating the fact that, hey, they believe that God put him in this position. And God is the only person he used to answer to. Um, at this time, there was not really a separation of church and state. Kind of went hand in hand. And yeah, he was basically God on earth in France at that time. Uh, next, the clergy. Uh, the French Catholic Church, as known as, better known as, the Gallican Church. Um, this is very prevalent during this time, the Catholic Church. Uh, I believe 80 or 90 percent of the population were Catholics. Uh, if you weren't Catholic, if you were a Jew or Protestant, uh, you did not get the full rights of uh, somebody who followed ca the Catholic Church. Um, didn't have voter rights or, well, they didn't have that day anyway, but they didn't have full rights. <laughs> the full rights of uh, any, somebody that was Catholic. Uh, so you have the church officials during this time, cardinals, archbishops, bishops, and priests. Um, now, mind you, the first two people, the first two that I mentioned, the king and the clergy, um, they didn't have to pay taxes. They did not have to pay taxes. They were exempt from paying taxes. Um, must be nice. Must be nice. Um, the king and clergy, they follow absolutist principles, centralized government. I covered that. Um, the divine right. We spoke about that being pointed by God, uh, censorship. You can't say anything bad against the church or against the king or you have to suffer consequences. Powerful military, one branch of government, so not three branches. You didn't have the judiciary, judiciary, executive branch, all of that good stuff, legislative branch. You didn't have that. Um, you have one branch of government, the monarch, who controlled all the functions of the government. He had all the power. Kind of like a dictatorship. Um, then there's the nobility, the aristocrats. Uh, these were landowners and rich families who inherited money, basically. Um, they've been rich for years, ever since the Middle Ages. Um, pretty well-off people also. Then you have the bourgeoisie. Uh, these were merchants, businessmen, you know, blue-collar workers, some white-collar workers. Lawyers who came from the peasant class, they kind of worked their way up. Um, they have some wealth. Uh, today you would call them middle class and even upper middle class. So they're, they're, they're decent. They're well off. Uh, they're not living as lavishly as the nobility or clergy or the king. But um, it's not as bad as the peasants. 
Um, they had little to no money. Uh, many worked live as serfs. They worked for somebody else most of the time. Um, but some peasants, they owned land, but they had no education, uh, no government services. They couldn't vote. And they are frequently experiencing diseases, famine, and war, usually what you would see in third world countries uh, or even in ghettos in the United States. Hey, no money, lack of money uh, brings in all sorts of bad experiences like diseases. You know, they, have, they have medical medical privileges as some other people who had money, famine, and war. I'm just going to say violence, uh, but war. Uh, next, you have the four major causes of the French Revolution. Weak leadership, bad crops, high prices, um, high taxes, <clears throat> questions raised by Enlightenment ideas. First, we're going to deal with the Enlightenment movement. It was heavily influenced by John Locke, uh, as was our, I believe our Bill of Rights was influenced by John Locke. Um, it challenged religion and political and the political system that didn't benefit the it challenged the religious system system and the political system that didn't b benefit the people during that time um major enlightenment ideas consist of using logic and reason to make decisions three branches of government separation of powers we we'll see that in our political system and that's what they were working towards also uh, free and fair elections, representative government, consent of the government, free commerce and trade, freedom of speech, right to protest, petition your government, trial by jury, freedom of religion, and universal education. <clears throat> A few of these points sound very familiar. It sounds like what we have now in the United States. Um, so they were trying to work towards that. Uh, again, these were some principles that were um, taught by John Locke, expressed by John Locke. So they kind of took that piggyback off of his ideas. Then there's the high taxes. Earlier I named who had to pay taxes and who didn't have to pay taxes. Uh, so we had the, of course, the king didn't have to pay taxes because he's exempt from everything. You know, absolute monarch. He's that guy. Um, <clears throat> the first is state, the Roman Catholic Church. So your clergy, your your cardinals, your archbishops, bishops, priests, exempt from taxes. The nobles, the landowners, the you know those who inherited the money, who's been rich since the Middle Ages, exempt from taxes. They didn't have to pay taxes. But when you get to the third estate, you know your bourgeoisie, the peasants, they have to pay high taxes. And it was pretty unfair. It kind of sounds like what's going on around today. You hear that? Heard it last year. How the president wanted to raise taxes for the rich and kind of lower taxes for the poor. It was pretty much unbalanced. But this was a little worse because um, at least the the rich here are paying some taxes. These guys weren't paying anything, so they had a smooth ride. Didn't have to worry about anything. Um. So another thing, bad harvest. Um, there was a hailstorm. Hailstorm during that time that eliminated most of their crops. Uh, and French has great food they like to eat. So of course, um, if you're already poor, um, you want to at least eat to survive. But when your crops are decimated by hailstorms, uh, um, it makes things a lot worse. And of course, this causes some outrage. You're already paying higher taxes high taxes and you're poor now your crop is gone uh during this time the price of bread doubled due to the bad harvest and a lot of people they faced starvation uh they were on the brink of you know death they had children um and this didn't help any um and well also during this time there was a rumor going around that marie antoinette was hoarding grain in the palace and this caused another uh uprise where the women went and marched over there and forced Marie Antoinette and King Louis out of the Palace of Versailles to Paris say hey, you guys got to get out of here so that was a, a cause of it one of the major causes of it uh, a lot of people want to say it's because of the Enlightenment movement and other things but um, 
Food will cause people to do some radical things. Lack of food will cause people to do some radical things. And we have weak leadership. King Louis the Sixteenth. Um, very indecisive about economic problems. Um, well, during this time, we they were in debt. France was in debt, uh, partially because well they helped funded the American Revolution. Uh, we eventually got them back for that in World War One and World War Two. Um, he spent Louis XVI spent half the national budget to service the federal debt. Uh, he even tried. He did many things to try to get out of you know debt. He he even thought about democracy. Tried democracy. Um, <laughs> uh, declare France ended up declaring bankruptcy during this time. Um, but the bad part about it, even though this was going on, as bad as the country was and as bad as his people were doing, um, they still maintained a very lavish lifestyle, uh, especially his wife Marie Antoinette, uh, wearing elaborate gowns and jewels and um, gambling. Like, how are you gambling when, you're, when your country is on the brink of, or already bankrupt, but, you know, when they're already poor? Um, and he also took advice from his wife, you know, Marie Antoinette. This eventually led to, well, their demise was, you know, pretty embarrassing in public, um, the guillotine. But that's later on. But they were they were an embarrassment. Um, some might say, some might get offended by this. Some might say that hey, he was the George W. Bush of their time. I don't know if you you can say it's that bad. Well, I don't think Bush was that bad. But yeah, very very bad leadership, and you know, leader your leadership is a ref your country is a reflection of your leadership oftentimes, and that was the case during this time. Um, poor leadership led to a poor country. You know, later on you they had Napoleon Bonaparte as their leader, and hey, he did great things, great leader, great country. But yeah. Um, Eventually, King Louis was one of the main major causes of the revolution. People were fed up with him. It was a combination of many things. Uh, when you have bad leadership in the midst of all of this, um, it kind of put the finishing touches and gave the drive for people to say, okay, let's make a change here. Um, be prepared tomorrow to give your opinions about what you would do in that situation if you were the bourgeoisie during the pre-revolutionary period with the events leading up to the Revolutionary War. Uh, and be prepared to discuss and just kind of think about could this happen in the United States today? Not back during the 17th century because you know we had our own Revolutionary War and all of that, but today with our social climate and the way things are going on today uh, with our government shut down and national debt do you think today the same thing could happen could there be a american revolution a revolt against whatever beliefs or political systems that are going on um, and why and that's it for now thank you